Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I want to thank the Lyons County Democratic Party for hosting us today, for giving us an opportunity to uh, express to you why it's important that we participate in this next coming election process and why I'm asking you to vote for me as your next mayor. Um, as I look across our city, I see several areas that we can improve upon, and several areas that we can improve upon that we are currently not addressing. Uh, one, one of our major platforms has been a public transportation system. We're the only metropolitan city of the state that does not have one. And I've came up with proposals that would fund the transportation system without even touching property taxes. Our property taxes are high enough now. And every time there seems like there's a project to, to be funded, politicians always want to put it on the backs of property owners. Well, we're going to have a public transportation system. There are several other ways to do it without property tax. I like what, what uh, Rome Floyd County does. Rome Floyd County, Floyd County uh, contracted with the city of Rome to augment their transportation need for high school kids going to a, a school in Floyd County. The city bus comes by and picks those kids up and they contract those services out. I, I like the idea that we could use VSU, like the University of Georgia goes with the city of Athens. Uh, Kids are going to school at UGA, have a bus pass and ride to ask after the transit system. We can do the same thing with VSU and wide rest and join the military. We gotta stop thinking inside the box all the time and think about what we can do to the to build the property owners. And there's so many other ways we can re generate revenue for public transportation. We all know we need it. Figuring out a way to fund it is what we gotta work on. It's, it's possible to do it. So we can the mayor talked about federal funding. We are eligible for federal funding. We've been a metropolitan city since 2003. So if you think about the money we've lost since 2003, that's went to Columbus, that's went to Macon, that's went to Augusta. That money that was earmarked for Valdosta. But since we don't have a transportation system, they've been benefiting from our money. Mm -hmm. Now the NPO comes out and say, well, in 2040, we're going to talk about transportation in 2040. Well, if you look at 2003 plus two, uh, 2040, that's 37 years. Most cities, you want to wait 30 minutes for a bus. We need to do something about jobs in Belfast. How in the world can West Point, Georgia, a town of 3,000 people, convince Kia Motor Company to build a plant there that hired 4,000 people? $1.3 billion in industry right there in West Point, Georgia. It not only affected West Point, it affected Columbus, the Greens. Over 14,000 people benefited from that one plant in West Point, Georgia. How did Minnesville, I'm not Minnesville, but how did Cordell convince the Georgia Port Authority to, to bring some of those containers to Cordell for an inner port, inner city port, when they were sending 50,000 trucks to Atlanta? How did they put them on trains, bring them to Cordell, and being shipped out to Cordell? Governor Deal was so impressed with what he'd done in Cordell, he's doing the same thing in Chatsworth, Georgia with inner city ports. How come we can't do it in Valdosta? We got two major rail lines coming here. And all Cordell has the Central Georgia rail line that has to go to Macon to connect with CSX and Norfolk Southern. We can do it right here in Valdosta with CSX and Norfolk Southern come right through the heart of downtown. I read an article today in Georgia City's newsletter that said Waycross, Georgia, Jessup, Georgia, are in the top 10 cities in Georgia for places to do business. Waycross, Georgia. Jessup, Georgia. You think about Metro Atlanta. Why not Valdosta? I'm going to tell you why not Valdosta. Because there's too many levels of red tape to open a business and do business in Valdosta. Not only do you have regulations from the building department, but you have land, the land development regulations on top of those regulations. Inside the LDR is an overlay district that puts up additional layer of regulation. Three layers of red tape. It's easy to build a high-rise hotel in downtown Atlanta and it is to open a restaurant in Val Austin, Georgia. That's ridiculous. We got to use a common sense approach. We have got to look to the future for our kids because when our kids graduate from Austin High School or they graduate from State University or Georgia Military College or Progress, folks, they need options besides game banging. It's a shame when a child can make more game banging and his dad kid working every day. We gotta change that mindset. We gotta give these kids options. I was talking to a member of the Industrial Authority 
I said, why can't we approach these high tech industries and tell them to come to Valdosta? I said, JD, your idea sounds good on paper, but these kids are not going to stay in Valdosta because they want to go to Atlanta for the fast life. And I said, I don't believe that. If you offer a child thirty-five dollars or $40,000 with a bachelor's degree from Valdosta, Georgia, I guarantee they're going to stay here and work. They may go to Atlanta on the weekend. <laughs> they come back on Sunday, go work on Monday morning. Yeah. You gotta get these children college. Right. Our kids are graduating high school and, and they're having the option. Now here's football season, y'all. Yeah. We go out there on Friday night and we cheer for those cats. But if those cats ain't moving that ball and they ain't scoring, the first thing we say is we need to put another quarterback in. Well I say it's time to put another quarterback to get off. It's time us move the ball down the field and score some of these jobs and bring them to our community and let our whole community prosper. And we've got to be more inclusive. Regardless of how you feel about a person personally, the law is the law. You have to include everybody. Everybody has to say I couldn't do certain things because of my skin color. The Supreme Court said you can't do it anymore. President Johnson signed the Civil Rights Act. That changed America forever. Now how would I live as a person who has my rights, telling somebody else they don't have the same rights as I do? It's not right and it's not legal. Thank you.